What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome. We are here for uh, Classic Cast. We're here for Classic Cast number nine, actually. We're here for Classic Cast number nine. I'm here with Tips Out. I'm here with Stay Safe. Uh, How you doing? Let's see if we can hear you guys. We can hear you guys. Great. Uh, we're going to talk about leveling today. We're going to talk about leveling today and the approach to the leveling process. Uh, there's a lot of different ways. There's a lot of different ways to level in Vanilla WoW, uh, whether you want to go for more of a casual style, whether you want to go for more of a hardcore style. Uh, let's go ahead and start by giving our general approaches that tips. Do you want to go ahead and start? Yeah, honestly, um, I, uh, I'm typically a kind of not, not a speed leveler, mm -hmm. but I do like to move pretty quickly throughout leveling. I think leveling is a really, really fun kind of mini competition in a sense. I know a lot of people, especially in the modern version of WoW today, it's all about the rating and stuff like that. But in vanilla, the really cool part about it is leveling is this long, <laughs> arduous process. And um, for me personally, I like to uh, do things fast, do things efficient, but at the same time, enjoy the cool quests along the way, enjoy all the really nice quest lines and all the really nice stories, and just have, have fun with the community, man. Have fun, run dungeons, do this mm -hmm. stuff, you know? Yeah, for <clears throat> sure, for sure. Uh, stay safe, do you wanna, do you wanna go for it? Yeah, I mean, uh, out of everything in all of Vanilla WoW, I think leveling is probably probably uh, my favorite thing to do. More than raiding or PvPing or or whatever or ranking up, leveling is my favorite thing. I love doing that the most. I've done it so many times back in the day. I did it once on a mage, and I've done it several other times since then. Um, and at this point, like my my fa my approach towards leveling is to try to do it. Uh, sort of as fast as possible. I, th I think what Tib said is true. Like it can be sort of a competitive and not, not necessarily competing against against other people, but competing is against yourself. Okay, this time I did it in seven days slash played. I'm gonna go for under seven days this time. Uh, it, it can definitely be competitive and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, for <clears throat> sure. Um, for me, personally, uh, I've been generally more of a casual leveler. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a lot like Tips and uh, I, I like to enjoy the leveling process, whether that's doing pvp whether that's going through and doing all the dungeons like i know for me the last time the last time that i leveled to 60 uh i actually i i made it my goal like you know what i, I want to experience the whole game so i want to go and and go to zones that i didn't go to in the past I, I want to uh level up through dungeons that i didn't do in the past it's actually funny the first time i ever leveled to 60 so I, i've talked about it before a lot of you guys already know but dark age of camelot Dark Age of Camelot is a game that I played, is the MMO that I played before World of Warcraft. That's how I got into MMOs. Mm -hmm. And in that game, at least on launch, there really wasn't questing. It, it was, you, you kind of just grinded mobs. At least that's that's how I leveled. And it took me yeah. forever to level, but that's what I did in WoW, too. So uh, that's just because that was my, how I did it. Like, you know, kind of, I was new to quests and stuff. I just, a lot of times I just end up killing boars in Westfall, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was just one of those things for me that... I wanted to go back and I, and this is the same thing in classic I'm, and or it's going to be different in classic uh, once classic launches because whenever that happens I think I'm going to go more of a speed leveling route instead of going with the more kind of kind of methodical having fun with it doing PvP and stuff while leveling I think it's going to be a little bit different for me I think it's going to be a little bit different for me yeah and hopefully it's... hopefully we get an opportunity to practice a lot on alpha and beta whenever that happens hopefully. yes that would be <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's crazy because, you know, if you're used to leveling uh, on certain versions of the game or in patch 1.12.1, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, when it comes to, like, grinding, especially grinding locations, like, I know a lot of the grinding locations that I use, they're subject to change for classic. Like, I know some of the mm -hmm. mobs that I grind on, there's no way those are the correct armor armor values, like, at all. So it's really interesting. I'm really excited to see uh, to see the classic beta. The in official. Sense that, yeah, you can see, uh, you can actually practice there. It's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. I definitely think you're right. Like spell damage values, resistance values, like spell resistance values on mobs, armor values, auto attack values. I bet all of these things are slightly off or very off. Um, I, I think I'm super excited to see an actual correct version of, of Vanilla WoW that we haven't seen since since uh, or since January 2007 when Vanilla WoW ended, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so kind of talking about Vanilla WoW, right? We, we talk about 1.12 a lot. Uh, we do know at this point, we do know that that's going to be the patch that they're going to at least base the game off of. That'll be the base patch for the game. Uh, while they haven't given, Blizzard hasn't given any confirmation of progressive itemization or progressive content, I think that's something that's pretty well, it's pretty well understood that it's going to be something that 
if they don't approach the game that way, it's going to be very detrimental. Um, even though they haven't technically confirmed it, but you know we're hoping for the best, right? Um, with a fresh launch of the servers in the 1.12 patch, let's go over that a little bit because they, there's there's again a few different ways to approach it, and it is going to be different. Uh, presumably, it's going to be different than whenever uh, the servers initially launched back in if you're in the U.S. November of 20 or 2004. Um, stay safe. Do you want to do you want to hit us up with that? Yeah, I mean, so if it's if it's launching with 1.12, they're going to have a lot of quests uh, in the game that that weren't available with patch 1.1 vanilla, when vanilla initially launched. I also want to say just like early on in this in the classic cast here, if if classic WoW is going to be your first time playing vanilla WoW, if you've never played it anywhere else back in the day or anywhere else, like I I, I really am sort of envious of you. I, I I really want you guys to go slow and enjoy it and level professions and do dungeons and have fun and make friends and, and explore the world um, if you haven't done it before. But I totally understand if you've done it if you've done it before uh, several times. Like I totally understand wanting to sort of like min max your gameplay, and um, yeah, definitely. Like we're gonna have to see uh, running on patch 1.12 on a fresh on a fresh release. Are they having dynamic respawns that impacts uh, the most efficient way to level? Um, that impacts the the effect the most efficient uh, group leveling size. Like are you leveling solo? Are you leveling in a group of two men? Are, are you leveling with three, four, five people? Um, all of this depends on whether or not they, like, really a, a very fundamental issue is dynamic response, I think, with this fresh server release with Classic WoW. What do you guys think? I, sure. I completely agree. Like, at the end of the day, especially when it comes to population sizes, if there's anything that's going to change from the original vanilla to now, one of the only things that I can see Blizzard modifying is population sizes, because in all likelihood, mm -hmm. the reason for the 3K restriction back in the day was probably a tech-related issue. And seeing as they're using the modern client, I think it's very possible that they boost the population sizes possibly to double, triple, we don't really know. Mm -hmm. um, but if they do that, they they have to implement some kind of dynamic respawning. And if they do that, like Stacey said, it affects leveling routes. All of a sudden grinding becomes more efficient. Group grinding really becomes a big mm -hmm. thing. You wouldn't normally see that on a like 3K pop server. And um, I mean, I don't know how, how Stacey, if you feel about it, or as you feel about it, but I'm not a big fan of dynamic response, <laughs> like at all. Uh, I don't like the idea of grinding the same four mobs over and over for like 20 hours straight and then switching to the next four mobs, like in the mm -hmm. next zone over. Uh, I think that could potentially be very damning, and I don't think that's what Vanilla was was ever really about. Yeah, I think for, for me, this is kind of my perspective on dynamic response, uh, I think it's sort of like a Band-Aid fix that we've seen in recent years. It's sort of a Band-Aid fix that we've seen in recent years, and I was talking about Band-Aid fixes, but um, it's a Band-Aid fix and almost like a necessary evil in order to, to be able to uh, handle the game properly for what it is. Um, to, to give at least the, the best experience for that population size. Another alternative to dynamic respawns would be to go and manually reset and almost you know redesign the respawn times on every single mob, every single rare, every single this, every single, every single that. Uh, and that's something that could be like a, a very <coughs> long process, but to do it manually, I think, I mean, that you're going to get the best results if you do it manually as opposed to like just having like an automatic thing like, oh, there's more people playing, respawn faster, you know? Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if that's something that they would do, but uh, it, 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 there is an alternative. I, I just think it's very, very, it, it's going to be very, very meticulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think my, my personal biggest issue with it, obviously, you know, grinding in a certain area for, for 20 hours and moving to the next area, that's not part, that's not a journey, that's not leveling, that's just grinding which I'm cool with. I just don't think it's part of the game. It should be part of the game. Um, the biggest issue with dynamic respawns is when the player has no idea if the dynamic respawns are working or what rate they're working at. And uh, w when it comes to like a player experience, imagine you just go into a zone expecting there to be the dynamic spawns up and they're not up. And then all of a sudden you have to go to a different zone because all of those mobs are dead in that zone. You go to the other zone oh wait, those are not up, but now the ones in the previous zone are up. And it creates a situation where players don't even know how to approach leveling anymore mm -hmm. because they're kind of in the dark. I think what's better than dynamic respawns is accelerated respawns. Just have a flat rate. If you want to make it twice as fast, three times as fast, four times as fast, depending on the population. It obviously has economic implications, yeah. but it, I think that's far better 
than players getting frustrated with rolling into a zone. Oh, wait, it's not working here. Let me try over there. Right. Oh, it's not working here. Oh, it's working back there, running back. <laughs> it's just, it's not an organic. It doesn't feel like a journey anymore. It doesn't feel like a leveling experience. Mm -hmm. It just feels like you're chasing the dynamic spawns and that sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you guys know historically I've been like super super big server. I always love the idea of you know 12,000 people 10,000 people whatever on a server But I think as time has gone on actually I have shifted my opinion like as I've gathered more information and seen seen sort of the results of dynamic respawns and giant servers um, At this point like I, I hope through an alpha and beta test phase they they meticulously test and, and find out <clears throat> Excuse me the the maximum amount of, amount of people that the natural uh, vanilla Azeroth can accommodate without dynamic respawns or increased uh, increased uh, respawn times, like you know, like it was two and a half or three thousand people back in the day. Can those same respawn times without, without any changes accommodate five thousand people, six thousand people, uh, in in a mm -hmm. reasonable way? And and if they can, that's what it should be. It it should be the maximum. This is what I hope. It should be the maximum amount of people you can have on a server without changing anything and have it still be healthy and and comfortable to play on. Okay. I completely agree. I completely agree. Like, honestly, as fan, you mentioned it, dynamic respawn is a band-aid on a gunshot wound. Yeah. The biggest problem, the core issue is population. 15,000 population servers, they're really cool in some sense, but at the same time, that's not what Azeroth was designed for. Mm -hmm. um, beyond just, you know, the, the server capacity, I mean, there's just, there's not enough mob points. There's not enough quests. There's not enough anything in the game to accommodate that. Mm -hmm. So... If, if they tune the population correctly, the dynamic spawn issue becomes kind of a side note and it could be something they can adjust, you know, a little bit, but it shouldn't be their solution to the issue of overpopulation. Yeah. And something else to consider, uh, whenever WoW released, it's not like they had, th there wasn't the player base to just drop 10,000 people in L1 Forest, Dunmoreau, uh, Duratar, like I mean, that, that like the game wasn't designed for that. Like they weren't expecting that, right? That, that wasn't even a, a thought to anybody. Um, now it's a little bit different because you have so many people congesting these zones, so it, it makes the problem that you mentioned tips even worse. If you think about it, uh, something that, that we did a bad job of. Uh, we talk about dynamic respawns all the time on our own streams. So we, did, we really didn't do, good, do a good job of defining it. That's, not, that's what we should have done. Uh, with dynamic respawns, the concept of dynamic respawn is, I'm just kind of touch back on this. The more people you have in an area, the faster the respawn times are in order to accommodate for higher population. So it's, right. it's basically like a, it, like, you know, Band-Aid fix, right? It's like they're putting magic dust on something where the game sees it as like, oh, there's, you know, 10 times as many people in this area is what would be expected, so now things are going to spawn faster so that more people can get their quests done. That's what dynamic respawns are. So for anybody yeah. who doesn't know, we, we should have mentioned that earlier. That's my bad. And I, I want to, I like, hammer this home again. I say this, like, every time we, we meet up and talk about this in public. Dynamic respawns are a really, really good example of the implications of, of how making one change results in, in you having to make several other changes to accommodate the first initial change. So the, so the first change they would make is having more than 3,000 players. Like if you have 10,000 people, that's a change to what vanilla was. And then to accommodate those extra people, you have to make another change, dynamic respawns or increased respawn timers or something like that. It, you, you, you get in this big, uh, you know, like sort of like positive self-reinforcing cycle where it's just, it's very hard to balance things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And like, um, that's why honestly, like, when it comes to dynamic respawns, again, it's a bandaid, avoid it if we can, fix the core issue population. And if they do decide to amplify the respawns in any capacity, make it a static accelerated multiplier. Don't make it based on how many people are in a zone, because players aren't going to know how many people are in a zone with them. And part of what skill is, is responding to patterns. If players can't predict patterns in the game, it makes it difficult to, to actually like perform in the game. And uh, again, it's very frustrating to go into an area not knowing how fast mobs are going to come up. I, I think that's just, it disrupts the pattern, disrupts the flow, mm -hmm. and ultimately leads to a very frustrating leveling experience. Right. And this could be a thing. Dynamic response could be a thing that are, it, it might not be so bad if the cap's not too high, but the higher the cap is, the worse the problem gets. And yeah, that's right. something else I, I thought I should mention. Um, so speaking of dynamic respawns, dynamic respawns do change your leveling strategy a little bit. 
uh, whether you want to do like solo leveling or group leveling, st stuff like that changes a little bit. Uh, stay safe. Do you actually do you, do you want to go into that a little bit? Like what what are the differences between group leveling and solo leveling in that regard? Yeah, I mean there are. So I'm not gonna like dive in on the numbers because I think I'd right. probably like put all you guys to sleep. But but d definitely. Um, if you are solo or two man or three man or five man uh, in a leveling group, the amount of XP each person in the group is getting changes. There's an XP multiplier or a coefficient uh, depending on how many people you have in the group. And so, um, like you, you have to, when you're when you're deciding what's an optimal group size of people to level with, you have to factor in kill speed. Okay, do you have four people in the group as opposed to two people? You're killing things twice as fast. Uh, but though you're killing things twice as fast. Um, are you getting enough XP from the mob to make that worth it? Are there even an, uh, enough mobs in the area to justify having a kill speed that high? Or are you going to kill stuff so fast you're running out of monsters? Um, and if that's the problem, are there dynamic respawns to accommodate this this extra group size? Like, are are, are you going to have respawns that are so fast that it's actually worthwhile to have a five a five man kill squad? Or are you just going to run out of monsters and it won't even be worth it? Um, this this is all stuff that like hugely depends on respawn rates and and dynamic respawns definitely. Mm -hmm. um yeah the group size is 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 a huge part of like the leveling meta mm -hmm. depending on depending on, on on what class you are are you are you a hunter are you a warlock are you like are you a warrior holy paladin leveling combo um yeah it all depends it, it, it all comes back to to dynamic respawns once again hmm. yeah i think uh, especially if you're rolling a melee class like a rogue or a warrior particularly warrior you do want to level at least until level 30, you do want to try to find at least a healer partner, possibly a group of three. I, I would say the ideal group is three because some classes just, they don't perform well solo. Some classes, they unlock their potential at certain milestones, like the 30 talent or the 40 talent, mm -hmm. stuff like that. So when you're mapping out your leveling, if you're practicing right now and you're trying to figure out what's the most optimal route for you, should you be in a group, should you be solo? It's definitely something that's done on a class by class basis, depending on, you know, what talents you pick and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, definitely melee classes roll with two other people if you can, yeah. unless you're a rep palette and then you can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. No, um, yeah, I, I do think there, there is a little bit of a misconception too about like uh, how, how different classes are in terms of leveling. Like, I think one thing that's kind of been proven uh, time and time again is that hunters are, are very, very, very good levelers. Um, mm -hmm. But I think something that is kind of a myth is, is the fact that warriors are bad levelers. I think that leveling as a warrior is something that is, uh, it, it might not be as intuitive in terms of just like, oh, like, for example, the hunter. It's like, oh, send your pet in, shoot, right? And the pet takes all the damage. You don't have to worry as much about downtime. Um, you just have to do certain things a little bit differently as a warrior. Um, same thing with paladin. Same thing with paladin as well. But uh, I, I do think that's something that's kind of like a misconception. Well, uh, it's definitely easier as a group for a melee. Uh, they're not as bad as people think, too. So, um, to kind of to kind of go from there, I, I kind of want to get into uh, talents and skills a little bit. And uh, I get this question a lot, particularly for paladins. I play paladin. What is a good leveling talent build? And I think if, whenever you're coming up with your talents, there, there's different things that you can do. I prefer to go straight down the ret tree, generally speaking. Um, but as a general rule, and, and I think this is the this is the same for all classes. There's three things that you want to uh, that you want to think of mainly, and that's damage output, damage input, and downtime. So whenever you're picking your talents, those are the three things that uh, that you really want to look at. Like how does this affect that? Doing more damage, taking less damage. And how does this affect my downtime? So, for example, uh, and again, I, I, I'm using Paladin as an example because I, I think it's an easy thing to do. Um, in the second tier, you have Improved Seal of the Crusader. Seal of the Crusader is something that you're not going to use very often uh, while leveling because if you judge it, then you're actually going to do less damage because you're not going to get the full benefit of the holy damage bonus uh, from your Seal of Command procs uh, or even Righteousness procs by the time you kill the mob, it's better just to judge damage outright because you have eight seconds until you can judge damage again. On the flip side of things, so now actually that hurts your downtime because you're using more mana, that's one. Uh, it reduces your damage output, but you can flip it and you can get points in deflection, so you can parry. And something that, uh, uh, not everybody knows this, but whenever you parry as a melee in vanilla WoW, you get parry hasted, you swing 40% faster. So yeah. if you parry, 
your 100% damage reduction on a melee hit, right? You're parrying it. You completely block it or parry it. Uh, and then on top of that, you're swinging 40% faster. So now you're reducing your damage taken, which in turn reduces your downtime. And then you're also increasing your damage output. So something like parry, something like deflection, is something that's very, very, very valuable while leveling. And uh, even in PvP as well, I like deflection a lot. Um, do you guys want to go into skills a little bit? <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 want, I really like what you said about downtime and stuff. If there, there are situations where, um, if you look at a very small sample size, like over the course of five minutes, um, what, what am I trying to say? Sometimes killing monsters slower, but having less downtime is actually better than killing monsters faster and having a lot more downtime. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a five minute sample size and you're killing monsters, you know, super fast, uh, that's not really an accurate depiction of, of your effective uptime or your, or your effective downtime. You want to look at like over the course of an hour, like, oh, you might be killing monsters slower, but have less downtime uh, and actually have more kills per hour or more effective uptime over the course of an hour. And that's actually better, mm -hmm. even if it might be like slower kills technically. But you're 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 active more often. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, downtime is a very big concept to always have in the back of your brain when you're leveling. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the only thing I would add on to that, and this is kind of a, a larger topic, but um, beyond just you know, damage dealt, damage taken, also what server you're playing on. Like, um, there's a couple of talents in the warrior tree, particularly booming voice in the fury tree. It's the second tier talent. Booming voice. If you look at it at face value. It just gives you a wider radius for your demoralizing shout and your battle shout. On a PvE server, pretty much useless, to be honest. You're not going to get any benefit from it whatsoever. It doesn't give you extra damage. It doesn't reduce your downtime. And it doesn't give you extra deflection or parry. However, on a PvP server, will you, where you will undoubtedly be encountering people out in the wild, horde, alliance, whatever the opposite of action is for you, demoralizing shout breaks stealth. So if you spec into that talent and you're in String with Thorn Veil and you feel like there's a stealthy around you, you just pop Demoralizing Shout and you break their stealth and all of a sudden you're saving yourself a five minute corpse run or a corpse camping spree because you spec into that talent. So understanding what server you're on, what zone you're in, stuff like that, and specking accordingly can also save you a lot of time. Some talents might not be giving you more damage or preventing more damage taken directly, but they save you downtime incrementally sorry, indirectly right, by, right. by uh, you know, avoiding like deaths by other players and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, speaking of like, uh, like a, a difference in talents while leveling on PvP or PvE, uh, speaking of Paladins a little bit, like let's say you're going deep into Retribution, uh, Ret Aura is something that's kind of nice. Improved Ret Aura is something that's kind of nice at low levels, but that might be a talent where you might want to take those two points and pull them out of there and put them into like eye for an eye or something, for example. Uh, if you happen to get crit from, uh, from a mage, from a caster, you can do return damage to them. Just a, that, that's, that's a PvP talent, uh, but even while leveling, like you're, you're gonna fight caster mobs and maybe if they crit you, you'll do some damage there too. So that's just, uh, that's another good example of what Tips was saying, where like you'll, you'll have different talent choices possibly if uh, you're leveling on a PvP versus a PvE server. Yeah, and shout out to Monkey News, by the way, for giving me that booming voice tip. But yeah, yeah there you go. Absolutely. Even even uh, beyond talents, just your general gameplay. Like if I'm leveling in a super contested zone or just on a PvP server as opposed to a PvE server, if I'm like leveling and I'm below, you know, 50%, 50 percent, 50 percent HP, 50 percent mana, like I'm kind of sweating because I know like you know, I'm not going to be able to to fend off a gank. And not only that, like I'm sort of encouraging people to gank me because I'm an easy kill. Mm -hmm. Whereas if, if I was just leveling, you know, by myself on a PVE server, I'm comfortable dipping down to 10 percent HP and 10 percent mana and then drinking up and then continue going. Uh, you, you really got to be aware of like any second if I'm if I'm getting attacked by a horde player or an alliance player, uh, how am I going to manage this? How am I going to deal with this? Right. Okay. And like even even the style of leveling now now that we're like talking about it like when you're on a PvP server you feel like everything you're like you're in a race man because if you're behind and you hit Stranglethorn Vale Ashen Vale uh, Hills Bread Foothills and you're behind oh my God does it suck but if you're in like the top five percent and you're only dealing with five percent of the enemy faction all of a sudden you've got a lot more freedom you, you know like Stay Safe said you can drink less often you can eat less often you can. You know, you can grind faster, you can do quests quicker. Mm -hmm. It's really important when you play on a PvP server to try to get ahead of the curve if you can so you don't fall behind and just get ganked over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, something else that we should talk about, we should talk about skills. Uh, when to get your skills, different thoughts about skills. Like I know in, in Vanilla WoW, getting your skills costs money. 
So it's while you're leveling, you, you do have to kind of keep in mind, like, do I have enough gold for this or silver at times? Do I have enough gold, silver for this? Do I want to get my mount at 40? Uh, do I play a class that doesn't need to pay for a mount at 40, like a warlock or a paladin? Um, <coughs> I know, stay safe, you did have some thoughts on this if you wanted to go ahead and go into that. Yeah, so for those of you that haven't played vanilla before, in um, in vanilla WoW and classic WoW, you can actually get new skills every two levels. So every even level, so every 22, 24, 26, 28, etc. Uh, you can you can go and train skills. What I would suggest doing is looking up a, a skill database or something and acknowledging, okay, uh, I'm level 20, and actually the skills I can buy at level 22, 24, and 26 aren't that good. So it's kind of a waste of my time to go back and check in with the trainer and train them. But at 28, man, I get some really good skills. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna plan that I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna come back from wherever I'm questing and go back to town, train my skills. And, uh, and then go back out and keep questing. I'm gonna route that in and, and know ahead of time when I wanna train. That will save you a ton of time. On top of that, you mentioned classes that, uh, that have to buy their mounts, uh, everyone other than a, than a Warlock and a Paladin, right? We have it really easy as fun. Because <laughs> um, it's 90 gold. 90 gold is a lot by the time you're level 40 or around there. Um, one thing you need to be very conscientious of is not training skills while you're leveling that you're not going to use. So, there, yeah, what, what, what I would do is look at your rotation, look at, look at talent. So you're going to train your, your abilities you're going to use for your general rotation or survivability. And then anything else, anything else that's sort of like superfluous or isn't really assisting you level uh, very much, don't train it. Train it at 60. If, if you're ever going to train it, train it at 60. Don't worry about it while you're leveling. Save some money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for, uh, in the case of Paladins, like, uh, you know, Seal Command is one that uh, it does the same amount of proc damage, whether it's rank 1 or rank 5. So if I'm running low on gold while leveling, then I, I won't get the, the next rank of Seal Command. I might get uh, the next rank of Blessing of Might or something, for example, just to save gold. Uh, on top of that, of course, we have it easy because we get free mounts at 40. <clears throat> Do you have anything on that, Tips? Yeah, I mean, when it, when it comes to mapping out your route uh, for skills, it's super important, especially... Like your 30s, I feel like the 30s are one of the biggest drop-off points when it comes to players, mm -hmm. um, especially on PvP servers. A lot of people just get frustrated with the game at that point. Uh, especially for Horde side, if you're in, if you're leveling an STV, you've got to go to Gromgul every time you want to level, and you've got to take the Zeppelin back to Orgrimmar every time you want to buy skills. It's it's just incredibly inefficient to go back every two levels to get another you know rank in Revenge or in freaking Shield Block. You know all that's irrelevant irrelevant while leveling mm -hmm. so it's one of the easiest things you can do in preparation for classic just open up classic db check out your classes abilities and mark off you know basically pre uh, predefine which levels you want to go back to the main city for to pick up your abilities after like level 20 ish level 30 ish you should really only go back a handful of times like five times uh, or so to get to get like major abilities but aside from that you don't need to be going every two levels back to Orgrimmar, back to Iron Forge, back to wherever, because it's just a giant waste of time when you've got to take a Zeppelin back, when you've got to fly from, you know, uh, Stranglethornville, you got to fly back to Stormwind, then back to Duskwood, then walk down to the Rebel Camp. It's just absolutely, it's just a giant waste of time. So small things like that can help mm -hmm. boost your efficiency without taking away from like, you know, your experience, the journey, stuff like that. You don't have to min-max hardcore. But something like this can really do do a lot for you and save you a lot of time. Yeah, I think uh, there's definitely like you know you were talking about STV is or really level thirty is a uh, is kind of like a sticking point. There's a few points like that. Like I know uh, this is, this is actually a, a point that I have a lot of trouble with. From forty to fifty is like a, a, a very rough patch for me while leveling. Do you guys want to talk about what you guys do from forty to fifty? Yeah, I mean, uh, Stacey, if you want to go ahead, but. Uh, there are a lot of uh, breadcrumb quests. N knowing what I would say, uh, and and we we can talk about this in in another session or something. Okay. Um, there there's called breadcrumb quests, and uh, so for example, this is one in Desolus. This is a level thirty zone, but um, there's a breadcrumb. This just one comes to mind. There's there's a breadcrumb quest in Stormwind uh, near the Mage Tower, mm -hmm. in the Mage District. Wait, that real if, quick, if you... real quick, not to cut you off. What he means by breadcrumb quest is, uh, it's like it leads you on a trail and you're going all over the place. Is what he's yeah. talking about. So exactly. Sorry, go ahead. Um, you pick up this quest in Stormwind, and it sends you to, to Desolus, and it unlocks like another ten quests in Desolus. And and so if you, if you didn't know about this random quest in Stormwind, you would have missed out on a ton of XP in Desolus. There are 
probably 25 examples of, of super long breadcrumb quest chains all throughout vanilla wow one unlocks western plague lands it, they're all over the place um and so if you don't know about this beforehand you're gonna find you're gonna find yourself stalling out like 40 to 50. i always have trouble like 27 to 30 uh 37 to 40 47 to 50 it's like those last two or three levels that i always struggle with uh because i'm like oh man but if you if you have really good breadcrumb quests um it's going to help a lot that'll help uh uh fill in that seam mm -hmm. and that transition i agree and stacy if you mentioned a little <laughs> bit as well uh, especially for those that have never played vanilla before there is no stay in one zone for like a certain level span and move on in vanilla um some zones they, they'll get you about three quarters of a level and then you'll run out of quests there that won't be unlocked for another two levels which means you'll have to travel to another zone travel all over the world do quests sporadically through various zones before you can unlock the next level zones in the original zone you started the next level quest in the original zone you started with so it's like you have to be very open to the idea of traveling it's something very foreign if you play from cataclysm and beyond you're used to all of your quests being in a location and now after patch 7.3.5, even more so, you don't have to go anywhere because of the level scaling. Um, in vanilla, you've got to travel a lot. And again, mapping that out is, is usually really helpful. But personally, from, from 40 to 50, what I do, uh, especially at 43, starting at 43, there's a couple of really, really good grinding spots. And once you hit level 40 as a warrior, you've got your mortal strike, you already have your whirlwind at 36, you've got sweeping strikes. That's when warrior, like, like S-Fan said earlier, that's when warrior leveling actually is really damn good you can grind really really well always pull two to three mobs at the same time very little downtime because you're cleaving things down so fast so i actually grind i grind from 43 to 51 in an ideal circumstance and i've mm -hmm. got a, a secret spot that i use but um grinding is i mean i i come from runescape classic so runescape classic was basically just a grind simulator you grinded like for 300 hours to get 99 attack 99 strike 99 defense so um grinding is fun too i mean i don't think a lot of people agree but 43 to 51 i'm grinding in tanaris man all the way yeah tanaris uh badlands is is uh good for the 40s too i believe or the the <laughs> early 40s at least um for me i, I so so again I, i've talked about before i i've always leveled in a more casual fashion trying to do the trying to do all like all the dungeons and stuff is, is that's that's what I really enjoy doing that's what I did the last time at least um the last time I went from 40 to 50 I did a lot of dungeons I did a lot of um uh, I did a lot of old man to try and get my weapons stone slayer and rock pounder drop off the last boss really good two-handed weapons um I ran it a bunch actually and also there's a quest chain in old man that gives you a crazy amount of xp that's really good uh for yeah. the early 40s uh, yeah. That's like I, I would say that's probably a must do. Like you don't have to do all the dungeons, and it's probably not recommended, or it's, it's definitely not recommended to do all the dungeons if you're trying to level quickly. It just depends on the experience you want to have, right? And whatever you want to do is fine. It's, there's tons of ways to play vanilla, but I would say even if you're like speed leveling, old man quest chain is is one of those that's like you, that's like you can't miss. I think. Yeah, definitely Zolfrock and old man. If you're gonna do oh, any yeah, of them, too. those are two heavy hitters right there. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So yeah, I for me that that was a big deal, and then also. Uh, just kind of going from there, Mardon. Mardon is another one that I did a lot of because there's some pieces of gear in there that are uh, good even at level 60. So Exactly. And, like, once you hit your 40s, that's when you really start to unlock, like, pre-raid BIS items. Like, mm -hmm. th there are some items, uh, like you said, Mardon, dude. There, there's items in Mardon that will – that are pre-raid BIS. <laughs> there's mm -hmm. items uh, – is it – I'm not sure if it's pre-raid BIS, but it's a really good helmet. The helmet off of the big uh, – rock guy in maradon i forgot his name um the the level 40 defense help like th there's items like that that are just great mm -hmm. um as you're as you're leveling up and i think 40s those are the dungeons that you should do repeatedly zulfarok is a great one a lot of great quests there a lot of really good items there and uh like i said oldamon dude stone slayer rock pounder mm -hmm. those things will take you to 60 basically i mean with with very few upgrades between then so. yeah yeah. Stay safe. Do you want to go over some of the items? Because we're, we're on the topic now. Do you want to go over some of the items that are considered pre-raid bis or close to that you get while leveling up? I know Mardon has a few. We mentioned that. But do you want to, <laughs> do you want to talk about some of them? Yeah, Mardon has a few. Um, there's the Goblin Boss uh, Tinker or Grizzle, Grizzle Torque or something like that. He has the Inventor's Focal Sword for casters, for mages, and warlocks. He also drops the shield, uh, the, M the, sh the, the blue shield with MP5 on it, uh, his, his Hypertech Buckler or something. I don't think that's the Holy Pally best in slot, pre or best in slot shield or shaman one 
but it's still very, very good. Mm -hmm. There's the ring that drops off of Princess and Moradon, what's it called, the Blackstone Ring, yes. which mm -hmm. is a melee DPS best in slot. In uh, in Upper Blackrock Spire, this is not 60, or, or it is 60, sorry, but you have Dalrens and stuff like that, but that's a bit higher level. Um, a lot of people will, while they're leveling in their in their mid 50s, will farm over and over and over again lower Blackrock Spire to get the the gems to get to make the Seal of Ascension. And also, there's there's several period bis items in there. There's a Hunter Bow, I think, in there. Um, there's stuff all over the place. Like you said, 45 to 60. Uh, you at Black, don't, we're not even going to talk about Blackrock Depths. There's so much in Blackrock Depths. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and getting off the topic of items, you can also uh, like 50 plus, especially start doing your attunements. You can get you can get your your Anixia attunement done by the time you're 60. You can get your Shadowforge key for uh, Blackrock Depths. You can get your Scholomance key for Scholomance. You can get your attunement to the to the core quest done. You can have all of these things ready to go by the time you're 60, and then you're just everything is unlocked. You're ready to go already. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's just interesting how if you want to min max classic, there's so many ways to do it, right? If you want to do it while leveling. But if you don't, that's totally fine too. And that's that's one thing that I, I want to make sure that that we uh, that we reiterate because I know for me, uh, you know, I'm somebody who you know the last time I leveled to 60, I, I cleared all the content, I did all this stuff. Uh, but at the beginning of the game, I had fun. Like I mean, I just I just wanted to go in and have fun. I PVP'd. I I did all the dungeons. Like I said, I just did whatever I wanted. Right. Uh, it wasn't until later on where it kind of ramped up and got more and more hardcore uh, as I needed to in the end game. Uh, yeah, in a fun dance game, yeah. <laughs> but but it's, it's fine, you know. Fun for, for me is different than what fun is for somebody else. For somebody else, fun might be, I want to get world first WoW Classic level 60. That's what fun could, for somebody else could be, and that's totally cool. Uh, but for me, fun was going into the, the mines in the southwest portion of... Uh, of, of Hillsbrad and healing those alliance friendly NPCs while the horde are trying to quest and killing the horde and oh, just, yeah. <laughs> just being a bastard. And I've told F that. You, dude. I know. Yeah, I've, I've done that. I've, I've told that story before, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, like that's, that's what was fun for me, you know, just harassing people. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think, uh, I think there's something to be said about that for sure. I agree. Yeah, mm -hmm. just uh, just play the game. Do you guys want to talk about professions? What do you guys think about professions? Uh, yeah. Yes. Do you want to, Do you want to start tips? Yeah, sure. So um, so uh, we we talked a little bit about sustain and damage in, uh, input and stuff like that. Um, obviously, to sustain yourself to limit downtime, you want to have food with you, potions all the time, and most importantly, first aid. First aid is the easiest secondary profession to level, in my opinion really easy to get. You'll be getting plenty of linen, wool, silk, et cetera, mage weave on the way. Uh, definitely be leveling your first aid. The other profession that I would recommend you pick up, especially if you want to make money and especially if you're grinding beasts a lot, skinning, man. Just skin, get that leather, throw it up on the auction house, vendor it, it doesn't matter. You'll just make so much more money if you're skinning. Although that will slow you down a little bit when it comes to leveling. So, um, but yeah. I I, uh, I typically avoid the gathering professions during a big server launch and probably for classic as well, only because you're not going to be able to compete with people at mining nodes and, and herb mm -hmm. nodes and stuff like that, unless those are also accelerated respawns. Maybe they are, maybe they won't be. We don't know in classic, but uh, try to stay away from the gathering professions. Pick up first aid. I recommend skinning as well. Those are those are the two big ones for me. Mm -hmm. I actually I actually like the gathering professions while leveling. Um, I, I think skinning is big. I think skinning is big, and uh, if a lot of people are skinning, and this is something you'll notice, uh, mats on the auction house probably will not sell for very much. Uh, there's going to be such a heavy influx of, of materials that they might sell for just barely more than vendor price. So, in my opinion, if you are going to get like a gathering profession or something, let's say you pick up herbalism, let's say you pick up mining, uh, you pick up mining and you, you keep enough ore and bars to basically sustain yourself for later on. And then you just vendor the rest for more gold. You pick up skinning and you can just vendor the leather for more gold if you want, um, depending on what you want to change your, your profession to. So if I want to go engineering eventually, I might go mining skinning and I get a bunch of bars, a bunch of ore, all this stuff for me uh, while leveling and I stockpile it 
And then whenever I switch to engineering, I have a stockpile of materials in order to level my engineering, uh, or I can just vendor whatever I want and uh, switch to whatever I want. Let's say I have skinning, I want to do that with leatherworking, right? So, and I could drop skinning if I want to. I, I probably, if you get skinning leveled up, I probably wouldn't recommend dropping it, but there's options there. there and, that, and that's, again, there's always options. It's how do you want to play? Um, that's just that, that's just what I would say. That's what I would say, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, that's all good. I mean, it comes down to how, like, how, how do you want to play the game? Do you want to, you want to do professions? Do them. If, if you, I, I would say if you want to level more quickly, it's like Tip said, I would personally say um, get first aid, ignore everything else. Mm. Get first aid, ignore everything else. Liter literally everything else. Skinning, herbing, I ignore all of it uh, to be as fast as possible. Um, now, I, I would also, here's a tip. If, if you do want to have professions, um, I mean, I, I say that for speed, like, my gosh, have you ever tried to uh, make a linen a linen bolt? Like, you sit there and it takes like 10 seconds to yes. make one linen bolt. If, if you're trying to level enchanting, there's no way you are going to have gold for your mount at 40. It, it, there is no way. It costs so much to level a lot of these professions. Um, enchanting is really expensive, just to reiterate. It so, is. Yeah. That's what I um, did. Not good. Not good. <laughs> you're a paladin. You could afford it, man. It's all yeah, good. I, got, I got lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Um... But I would say, if you do want to level these professions, always be conscientious of, of, of your time. Um, if you're going to be making your bandages, or if you're going to be making bolts of, of, of wool, do it while you're on a boat. Do it while you're waiting for a boat. Mm. Um, if you're trying to level your cooking on the boat, drop a campfire, uh, cook your stuff on the boat. All, you always want to be making the most of your time. That's, that's how you want to be looking at this stuff. Yeah. For sure, for sure. The min max is, yo. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's, on the it's boat, crazy. Dude. <laughs> Campfire on the boat, dude. S'mores on the boat. Yeah. Um, let's see. If we, uh, we, we, we touched on it a little bit, right? You, you mentioned BRD, and there's, uh, and, and maybe BRD is something that we'll, we'll delve into real deep later on. But, uh, you know, talking about, you know, leveling up and, and doing things while leveling. BRD has a, there's two attunements that run through BRD, and that's Anixia and MC. And Stay Safe was saying that you could even get those before level 60. And, and your Shadow Forge key. Get the key also. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Shadow Forge key too. So BRD is, is an instance. It's a dungeon that's very, very valuable to do while leveling uh, if you're trying to be, like, ready to go as soon as you hit level 60. Uh, there's also several items in there, whether that's, uh, whether that's uh, Hand of Justice. Hand of Justice is arguably a best-in-slot melee trinket. Uh almost to the end of the game in vanilla it's something that's really really good uh there's there's different items in there there's patterns in there the uh the repair bot schematic uh is like halfway through the instance on the ground you can go in there and you pick it up and uh for your engineers who you want repair bots for your dungeons so i mean there, there's a lot there's a lot to do in brd for sure and check this out if you go in there with all the quests you, you load it up you, you do it uh, one efficient run or one one or two efficient runs with all the quests. We're talking like a level and a half or two levels of just straight quest XP. It is juicy. There's so much XP. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I, I save that till the mid fifties or late fifties, and mm -hmm. it's a big, it's a big bonus, bonus XP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then also mm -hmm. like the fire resistance gear, and uh, uh, there, there, there's just so much to do in BRD. There's so much to do. So that's that's one that we'll probably delve into uh, a little bit more precisely. Uh, in a later classic cast, I would really like to talk about that a little bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Well, what, what else? Okay. So, um, looking at our notes here, um, Stay Safe, you wrote this down. You said when to loot and when not to loot. Do you want to talk about oh, that yeah. a little bit more? Yeah. Someone asked me about this morning on my stream, and I said, uh, uh, I hope that I forgot. Oh, you cut out. You cut out. On for the a classic. Second. Start, Can start you hear over? me? Hello. Yeah, 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 you cut out for a second. Yeah, someone asked me that on my stream earlier today, and I said, "Wait, I'll answer it on the classic cast today." There you go. So, um, we're we're talking about leveling. You're out uh, in in a forest, killing mobs, and you're uh, let, let's say um, uh, you don't really need anything from this monster, and uh, as you're killing it, it's running away from you. Like, let's say you're this is more of like a caster problem. You're a hunter, or a warlock, or a mage, or something, mm -hmm. and the monster is running away from you. It it runs this way, and you're trying to go this way. Are you gonna go? Are you gonna take ten or fifteen seconds to go out of your way? Uh, to go to go loot this thing for like maybe it's like it's pelt or like five copper and uh, i i will typically say no if a monster is just like completely out of the way and it's like annoying to go loot i, I will just not loot it uh, that's another one of those like super min maxi things mm -hmm. um, 
now someone's going to say like that's the monster that's going to drop like the staff of jordan like <laughs> okay yeah. well then that's that's the way it goes yeah that's the way yeah. it goes because yeah. uh, at that point like it, it, it would be really lucky if you got that is what you're saying but just the the uh, like adding on those seconds at a time it turns into minutes turns into hours is basically what you're saying yeah. yeah and it's almost better just to rush to 60 like i know a lot of people try to make gold as they're leveling in my opinion like just rush to 60 then you can do whatever the heck you want man like you can go back everything you grind you'll be grinding it 10 times faster um in general like you, you'll just you'll be able to go places that you weren't able to before because you're high level stuff like that people will be less likely to mess with you in world pvp if you're like 60 and they're 40. um i have always felt like it's almost more efficient just to get to 60 and then kind of go back and, and level professions yeah. well so, um, but, sorry yeah. go ahead I, I, I thought you were done I, I don't know like mathematically if it, if it pans out but it seems like it does yeah for me i i see it as a sort of thing where if you rush to 60 right and this is my personal opinion if you rush to 60 then you're only going to be playing with everybody else who rushed to 60. And so the player pool is going to be smaller because once you get there, you're going to do dungeons. Eventually, you're going to get into raids. There's stuff that you need to do. WoW is a very social game. It's an MMORPG. It's supposed to be. <laughs> and it's something that you need other people to be able to, to, to get the full. You don't have to, but for the full breadth of the content, to, to get the, the everything that the game provides to you, you're going to need to play with other people. So if, if you go too fast, there's not going to be as many people to play with. Um, so yeah, I mean, to, to me, it's just like, you can play however you want. Um, I think for me personally, what I plan on doing is I want to have two characters. Uh, I will play one character slow and just kind of level up nice and easy, you know, more casually and, and do all the dungeons and do all the little stuff that I like to do. And then on the flip side of things, uh, I would like to rush a PVP character straight to 60. That's what, so I, I want to play both ways whenever classic comes out. I do want to throw this in there. If you rush to 60, you're right. You're not going to be able to find, you know, an Uber's group or something like, because there's just not going to be enough people probably. Um, but if you're if you're 60 very early, you can make so much gold, so much gold just from having all the gold farms to yourself. And I'm talking, I'm not even talking mafia, mafia true, but herb farming. And, and, and there's so many ways to make gold if you're true. one of the first people there and you have no competition for the nodes and everything. True. One of the mistakes yeah. I'm in, uh, you know, I talked about, like, I did enchanting before, right? One of the, while enchanting, uh, namely disenchanting, was a, was a decent way to make gold while I was level 60. I, I try to level my enchanting as high as I could for my level uh, every time, right? Or wherever I was at. I, I just wanted to cap my enchanting. And that cost me a lot of gold. And also, I was leveling so slow that I wasn't one of the first people on the server with, like, Crusader enchant. So by the time I got the Crusader enchant and, and you have to camp that, that uh, NPC in, I believe it's in Moonglade, that, that, uh, to get the rod. Oh, for the rod. You know what right, I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So like it, it ended up being a huge mess and uh, I ended up losing a ton of gold from enchanting and I didn't make it back until months in, maybe, maybe three months in, I don't know. Uh, it, it was a while, but if you if you happen to be fortunate enough to be one of the first enchanters on the server with like a crusader enchant or uh, something along those lines, then you can make a lot of gold and you can really monopolize the economy in that sense. You know, supply and demand. Everybody wants it. One guy's got it. You're gonna make a you're, you're gonna make bank, honestly. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, hey, do you guys want to talk about class quests? Which class quests do you do? What advice do you have for people? Because in Vanilla WoW, yeah. for those of you that don't know, yeah. every class has, there's a huge sense of class identity. Mm -hmm. um, every class has a bunch of unique quests that they do that, get, that give special items or uh, it, it's crazy. So what do you guys think about it? Um, for warriors, uh, do your level 10 quest. That gives you a really good weapon and it gives you defensive stance. Do that one. Avoid your level 20 brutal armor quests. Those quests are so ridiculous, and uh, they, they're not worth it at all, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, level 30, do your Berserker Stance Whirlwind Axe quest, and then pretty much do your level 50 quest, the Fallen Hero of the Horde quest. But the problem with that one is it's not there at launch, at least uh, if they're going with progressive questing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's not there at launch, so you usually, depending on when you start leveling, how fast you get to 60, you miss it. But uh, yeah, I would, say, I would say those are the ones you really target. Mm -hmm. while leveling for uh for paladins 
Uh, there's really one quest, namely, that uh, I, I would say you don't even have to do it. It, it, it's, it probably slows down your leveling process, but it's an item. The weapon that you get from it is almost, like, iconic, and that's Varigan's Fist. And right. uh, Varigan's Fist is a weapon that uh, a lot of people love it. It's a great weapon. Uh, it doesn't get replaced until level 29. You get Corpse Maker at level 29, um, at least as far as, like, having the best weapon that you could have. Uh, I would say it doesn't get replaced till then, uh, because you can actually get it at level twenty, technically, and I, I believe it's a level thirty-one weapon. So it's it's a really really strong weapon uh, for the level, but it's a three point two speed. There's some there's some quirky things about it. Uh, if you want to do that and you're going for more like the fun route and you want to do a lot of damage and stuff like that, it's probably faster if you do it the other way. But otherwise, uh, Varigan's Fist is is definitely a good weapon doing that quest chain to get that. There's also the quest where you get the Holy Might Stone from Sunken Temple. That's one that I wouldn't say you have to do. A lot of people like to do that one. Um, but Sunken Temple is just kind of... It's it's very frustrating to do if you don't have a group that knows how to do it and how to uh, navigate it. Yeah. It's very do, not, do not hug Sunken Temple. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really hard to navigate. It's a, it's a really cool dungeon, but it's really hard to navigate. And you can pug it if you want, but... Don't pug it with the intention of, hey, like, we got to do this fast. If you're going to pug it, expect to be in there for a while. Yeah. 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 It's a great dungeon, though. I like it's it a really lot. It's really cool. Yeah. But you just got to know what to expect whenever you go in. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I, I don't know if, just side note, I don't know if you guys have done that dungeon on retail, but oh my God, they gutted it. It's so, it's so disappointing. Really? It, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's just like the upper level with the dragons. There's nothing else to it now. It's, it's really, oh, really. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. They took out everything else. That's wild. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, I didn't know that. Um, it, it, I did it earlier today. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. I'm, I'm reeling. Uh, any, anyway, uh, for Warlocks, you know, you get your Imp at level 1 or level 2. You get your Voidwalker, mandatory, level 10. Your, your Voidwalker, you you and your Voidwalker, your boys, all the time. You and the Void boy, it's you guys together chilling and, and, and taking care of business. Charlos, yeah, rest in peace. <laughs> um <laughs> And then uh, there's a level 28 quest where you get, where you get your uh, your Dread Mage hat. That hat is so good. It's going to last you a super long time, that hat. Dread Mage hat um, at level... Uh, there's a couple quests you would skip. I skip uh, the Fell Hunter quest. I, I skip the Succubus quest. The Succubus is level 20. Fell Hunter is level, um, is level uh, 30. I get the the Orb of Dar Or Hill, which is level 38 quest. Look at the Charlos in the chat. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, <laughs> You uh you get your orb of Dar or Dar or Hill level thirty. I always skip the the enchanted gold blood robe, which is another level thirty quest, just because I'm skipping the quests that you don't really benefit a lot, and they're I, I consider them I call them like FedEx quests, where you're just like running all over the place talking. This guy to go talk mm. to that guy, talk to this guy. There's not you're not doing anything other than just running around talking to people. I tend to skip those quests. You get you get you you, uh, you get your mount at forty, and then uh, that's pretty much it until sixty. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Warlocks have a lot of class quests because you have so many pets and stuff that you have to get. There's a lot of them. There's yeah. a lot of them. There's yeah. a lot. There's a lot. And then, and then of course, every, every class had a, a class quest added. Uh, what patch? Was it 1.10? Do you guys remember the level 50 class quest where you actually have to go into Sunken Temple and get the, get the troll feathers? Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's the Holy Might Stone one for the, for the Paladins. Yeah. I yeah. think that's the one. So, so if Classic WoW follows an actual vanilla timeline, like a content release timeline, those quests uh, should not be in the game when Classic WoW is out. It'll be over a year until those quests are out. Well yeah. over a year. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Because AQ yeah. doesn't come until like right about a year after release, I mm-hmm. believe. Like a little, a little yep. over a year after release. So. Right. Yeah, very, uh, very interesting. Very interesting for sure. Um, is there and anything else that you want to talk about? That I want to talk about. Yeah, um, you, is there anything else that you had that you wanted to bring up? Because we might we be able to go about, into our Q and A here pretty pretty soon. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, I want to hear what people have to say, dude. You just got a sub from Gainzilla Tier One. Oh, I did. Gainzilla, yeah. thank you for the sub, man. Appreciate that, dude. <laughs> um, yeah. You want to start the Q and A, man? Yeah. Real quick, guys. Uh, you know, while while we still have people here, and, and we're gonna have more people in the Q and A, but I, I wanted to go ahead and mention before the end of the stream, uh, if you haven't already, please, please, please. Uh, follow Stay Safe, Stay Safe TV on YouTube and on Twitch, and then on Twitter he's Stay Safe Warlock. You can see it right, right, right down, uh, right down there under his under his uh, 
camera. And then same thing with tips. Tips out, baby, on every platform. For me, it's S Fan TV on every platform as well. So if you guys have uh, if you guys have not followed us yet, I, I would very much appreciate that, and I think they would as well. Um, <clears throat> so uh, going into Q and A, and tips will be back in just a minute. But going into Q and A, uh, if you guys want to tweet at us, hashtag Classicast, tweet at us. Uh, or we're going to read stuff out of the chat. Uh, I had one that I got a while ago, but I want to wait till tips gets here too. Cause it's, it's a big one, but, uh, yeah. yeah, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and read some out of, uh, out of the chat here first to start off. Well, I see one right here from Dudas. Dudas too. Uh, what AQ a year after release, what do you think people will do for a year when leveling is done? Well, I mean, if classic falls an actual vanilla content release timeline, it would start with, um, it would start with Molten Corn and Nixia, and then a month later, you would have Mordon added. And then a couple months later, you would have Dire Maul added. And then a couple months after that, you would have Blackwing Lair. And then a couple months after that, you would have Zolgarub. Uh, and in between all of that, you're having Battlegrounds being added. You're having, like, there's there's a lot to do. You're ranking. There's a ton to do. Um, yeah, don't, don't worry about having a lack of content before AQ comes out. Seriously, there is a ton to do. You're going to feel like you have too much to do. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um... Yeah, I mean, I think I think you hit the nail on the head, uh, for sure. I mean, there's 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 always something going on. Um, yeah. Next one, this is from Zahatum. How do you feel about Rep Pal and DPS? You play in your own guild, but you think people will refuse to agree with you because it's not optimal. Uh, I I think the big thing with playing Rep is you have to prove yourself. It's it's something that's it's not really a spec that's easy to play, despite what people think, because you really got to go. You've really got to go out of your way to figure out everything that you can do. And, and even if you – you have to play it with a min-max mentality without playing in a min-maxy guild necessarily. Uh, you know, a guild that's min-maxy might take you. It's not really going to – you're never going to not clear the content because you have a boomkin or a rat or something like that in your raid. If you, There's 39 other people in the raid too. You know, if you're not clearing content and you blame it on one of those guys, then you're not really – you're you're heavily mistaken, I would say, but um, but no, for sure, it's not something that's necessarily optimal DPS. Uh, but I, I think especially in the early patches, there's uh, there's a little bit less of a difference there. Uh, red does scale very well in PvP with gear, but uh, in in PVE you still scale. But uh, some of the other classes, especially like you know you talk about Fury Warriors and Rogues, uh, Rogues have a higher floor, Fury scales better. Mm -hmm. But uh, Fury definitely like scales like super hard. But good enough to be viable, yes. Is it optimal? No. If you want to be like super optimal, bring twelve Fury Warriors. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Bring twenty. Yeah. Why not? Back yeah, just bring twenty, dude. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, this this is a really good one. Rushing to, and I see people are very concerned about this, and probably rightly so. Rushing to sixty and putting professions aside, how are you going to get gold for your mount at forty? So, getting gold for your mount at forty starts at level one. You are making a bunch of conscious decisions. You're you're not buying stupid things from other people or buying stupid things on the auction house. You are only training certain specific talents. You're saving all your gold, all your gold. Well, one of the huge gold sinks um, in vanilla actually while leveling is uh, buying food and water. Like it really is. By the time you hit 40, you'll have probably spent 20 or 25 gold on food and water. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you should um, try to become friends with a mage and uh, or just play a mage. <laughs> uh, first thing you do when you log in for the day, say, hey, uh, hey, mage, bro, can I have some food and water? It will actually, uh, leeching, off, leeching his food and water will save you a ton of gold. Like it actually will. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, you're, you're always making smart conscious decisions another thing i would look for when you're leveling if if you're uh you know trying to make gold is uh, I, I find that beasts tend to uh drop a lot of items that vendor really well grinding beasts if you're ever going to grind grinding beasts because beasts tend to drop like three or four different types like like a pelt a claw a fang uh you know a tail or something like that they drop several gray items that stack typically up to five or ten so you can you can hold a lot of them in your bags and you, you just vendor them you just vendor them so it's sort of uh, economy proof because you don't have to really deal or, or trade or interact with other people. It's just a, it's just a straight cash gold farm. Um, mm. Beasts are really good for gold farming, I think, while you're leveling. And we're talking, uh, you know, vultures, owls, wolves, uh, hyenas in, in Desolus are, are a popular one. Um, things like that. That's I would say think. spiders. Spiders uh, are really big because they drop spider silk. And spider silk vendors for a lot and it sells for a lot in the auction house, depending on when you want to put it up there. 
And uh, also whelps. If you if you kill whelps, they drop flame sacks, which are used for a lot of different like fire resist potions and stuff like that. Um, those actually go for a lot too, because those are really really desired at the end game. So mm -hmm. definitely recommend that. Uh, I like this quest or this, this question. <laughs> you mentioned grouping while leveling. Is having a group consistently faster, or is it only for mid to late game? Since most speedrunners solo, does that indicate solo is faster? This is from Super Du. Uh, it, it, I don't think it's necessarily, uh, and this is something that Stay Safe talked about a little bit earlier, but like it, it's not something that's necessarily consistently faster, uh, but it's it's different leveling styles based on how the server is set up, right? If there's going to be dynamic respawns, it's going to be a little different as opposed to like the, the traditional exactly how vanilla was. Stay Safe, do you want to break that down a little bit more? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say under like normal vanilla WoW circumstances, if there's no crazy dynamic respawns, um, I would say probably solo or duo leveling is 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 optimal. Um, I think that when you have, uh, like I said, assuming no crazy dynamic response, if you have four or five people, yes, you're killing things faster, but actually like the benefit you get, let's say you have four people and you add a, you add a fifth, um, your kill speed does not increase to such a rate that it's worth uh, losing a portion of XP to that fifth person. And also you're going to be killing things so fast that you will run out of mobs to kill. You're gonna you're just you're gonna smoke through everything. You're gonna run out of stuff to do. It's not it's not worth it. Now, um, there are some examples. Let's say you're in a super packed area and you have to do a quest where you have to kill um, ten wolves. There, there's sort of two types of quests in vanilla. There's there's quests where you have to kill ten wolves or you have to kill ten wolves and loot uh, ten wolf fangs. So if if you're let, let's talk like theory here, leveling theory. If you're um, if you have to kill just ten wolves. Mm -hmm. um, really big picture it's not it's not that bad to be in a group of five people because you're all getting credit but if you have to loot if you have to actually loot 10 wolf fangs um you're actually competing against your own group members for the drops when you think about it so having yeah. having more people like that it actually is often a detriment i would say one or two people is always optimal uh depending on your class to, like like for a warlock or a mage or a hunter one person if you're a warrior or a paladin or something like that two people probably um that's what i would say yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, th this is kind of a, a very specific example, but in particular, the, uh, what's it called? Oh, not lost in battle. The other man crit quest, I forgot what it was called. It's in the Barrens. It requires you to loot 60 bristleback tusks or quillbore tusks. Um, that quest is available at level 14. And the problem is those guys are like level 18 to 20. So what ends up happening is a lot of people pick up that quest and they're like, oh my God, I should group up with people to do that quest because I'm four levels lower. And they end up spending like five hours until everybody gets their 60 tusks um, because there's no shared loot table there. So yeah, I, I definitely agree. Yeah. Be very careful with, with uh, quests that require to loot mobs and, and consume my hatred, correct. Yeah, just be careful of that one. There you go. See, I, I've, never, I've never leveled a uh, horde like that. So like, I, I didn't even know that's insane. Do you have to get 60 of them? Yeah, you have to get 60, and it's it's a trick because they give you the quest at 14, and the mobs are basically level 20. And it's like, so your natural instinct is, oh, my God, I need to group up for this quest. You group up, and you end up spending, like, five, six hours literally until everybody has their tusks. It's That's insane. Brutal. That's brutal. Uh, Jeroen's brought up a good question a little bit earlier. Uh, do you think that due to the each player being overall better nowadays, and we know more about the game, that we'll discover new and better ways to play classes? I think... I think that's a really good point, Druins. Uh, a lot of people say that, like, actually, Tibbs, you, I didn't get to watch it yet, but didn't you just post a video about this? Yeah, I yeah. posted a video called The Myth of Vanilla Theory Crafting. I, 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 I'm very much uh, a believer in that. Like, yeah. I feel like there's still a lot left to learn. I feel like, especially at the very high end, it seems like whenever I talk to really, really high end players, they all tell me the same thing. They're all saying, it's not done yet. We're still figuring stuff out. We're not sure about this. We're not sure yep. about that. And because most people play vanilla or, you know, the, the modern, the understanding of vanilla we have today is based on private server values. A lot of those values are wrong. And some of them, like the iron folk proc rates on rest in peace Nostalrius was like at 20%. Yeah. When in reality, it's probably closer to 2%. That kind of stuff throws things out the window, plus boss values, damage yeah. value, you know. It, we, we have, we don't know so much how can we say theory crafting in vanilla is done if most of the theory crafting mm -hmm. was done based on fake or or fabricated values? Yeah, and I, I'm so glad you bring this up, Jerens, because this is something I, I like. I feel really strongly about this too. Um, 
because and, and and like you said, tips. I I I don't really speak in definites a lot of times, because mm -hmm. I I don't think a lot of the stuff is definite. Like I say, well, like so far I think this, but constantly working, constantly testing, churning the bottom of the barrel. Like, well, let's let's tweak this, let's do that, let's do this, uh, to kind of figure out like what what works out the best. And uh, I, I think that's something that theory crafting. <laughs> Any sort of research like that, it never stops. Like, you're never like, this is it. We're done here. For two reasons. One, because... as <laughs> One is because, like, there's the, the whole private server deal, right? But two is because... <laughs> the kind of person that theory crafts like this can't help themselves. <laughs> and, like, I know I'm like that. Where, like, I'm always just like... Okay, I think I have the answer, but I'm just going to go test everything again, right? Just to go see, just to go do this, just to go that. And like, you'll see me in classic, you'll see me sitting outside Ironforge all the time, like just auto attacking a healer while they heal themselves. And like, I'm like running down like proc rates and like, okay, well, if this does this, is this percent of my damage? And looking at my, my damage meter add on or whatever, it'll look at everything like that. Like, that's just, that's just what I do. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a really good question, Druins. I think that their theory crafting never stops. I think it never stops, yeah. and people are going to find out new things. The Iron Foe example is really, really good because uh, a lot of yeah. people, like, I know whenever I first started making videos, I saw a video of somebody saying that Iron Foe is, like, the best DPS weapon for a Rep Paladin, and I was like, it's, what? Hello? Like, it doesn't make any <laughs> yeah. sense. But it's it's because of, like, you know, private server memory, basically. You know, just stuff being, uh, you know, not, not really having a lot of definites on, on private servers over the years, and, again... Uh, that's something that we're all really excited about is to have like an actual uh, authentic or as close to authentic version of <clears throat> vanilla as possible. So yeah. it'll be really interesting. It'll be really interesting. I, I agree with I agree with everything you guys just said about you, you, you never stop learning. But I also want to sort of like give a warning. Uh, I, I'm going to be like that guy. Um, it, I feel pretty confident in saying that I've actually encountered a lot of a lot of these people that say, you know, I, I'm going to be the best prop paladin ever, and I'm going to be tanking every raid. I'm going to be main tanking every raid, and it, I, no one else has done it right. And I'm going to be the one that does it right. Uh, I'm going to revolutionize prop paladin gameplay. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, if you go into classic thinking that, I think you'll probably be disappointed. Or if you want to revolutionize rep paladin gameplay and be the the you, if you're expecting to be the top DPS of every raid always you'll probably be disappointed. Right. Um, or, or, or Boomkins, or Elemental Shamans, or things like this. Even as Warlocks. Warlocks, whew, Warlocks are like the worst <laughs> DPS class there is in Molten Core. Like, it's terrible. Yeah. So, yeah. You, I, I think, um, be grounded. You, you can try to change things, and, and, and you can always improve things, but also, uh, don't don't get your hopes up, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, there, there is something to be said for the literal 14 years of theorycraft that have, that have been put into this game. Uh, a lot is known, but there is definitely stuff that isn't known. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and I think it's you know it kind of goes back to how the game was designed. Blizzard never designed all the specs to to have equal output in PVE, PvP, leveling, etc. The game was designed on a very situational and conditional basis. So don't think of it as you know oh is my class viable or not. Think of it as what does this spec do well, or, or you know and in this situation you know how does it perform and stuff like that you'll be much less disappointed that way. And um, I do just want to give credit to the original Blizzard developers. Like, one of the reasons why vanilla is so difficult to theorycraft in comparison to the modern game, this, the items are just not streamlined. Dude, nothing is streamlined in this game. Like, the trinkets, trinkets in vanilla have such unique procs, and, and this you can mm. tell each one was designed by, by somebody who was actually designing it. They're not just some stat template thrown across all these trinkets and... You know, they're all basically stat sticks. Yeah. Um, everything in vanilla is so situational, and and it's it's very, people would call it clunky, but I would say very carefully crafted. And uh, as a result, it just makes things hard to figure out. It's not intuitive. You can't just plug and chug formulas. You can, but it just takes a lot longer. And and you know, obviously, it takes a long time to test things because it takes so long to level and do all this stuff in vanilla. So that that also, uh, I guess, uh, contributes to the reason why we probably haven't figured everything out yet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Um this is something we've we've talked about before. Actually, no, I, I don't I don't want to get into that just yet. Uh just one more is asking a question. How do you feel about increasing the stack caps? He's talking about like the 
materials, like stacking to 200 instead of 20. Uh, this is something that uh, a lot of people bring up these conveniences like um, the collections tab or uh, increasing the, essentially indirectly increasing the amount of bag space that you have. Right. And bag management is something that I think is, is a very important part of the gameplay. Like I know, you know, we, we talked to our tank friends and, you know, the, the tanks who are doing everything they can, just for example, I'm just using tanks for example, they literally to each, every single specific slot there's something that, to put there. Like, they're completely capped out every raid. I know for me as a rep pallet, and I'm, I'm very much the same way. A lot of people joke about my bags, whether they're filled with trash or whether they're filled with raid mats and potions and all this stuff. That's that's a part of the gameplay to me. Um, I, I think that's something that is very important. And whenever you, uh, whenever you make it to where you can put more mats on a single character, it actually does affect the economy in a sense too because uh, you can hoard mats even easier uh, in a sense, it's not not 100%, but it's in the same vein as like uh, being able to create guild banks, right? And one of the side effects of, of guild banks being in vanilla is people would make one character guilds with guild banks and they would basically increase their own bank space. This is the same sort of idea with that specific example. Uh, that's why stuff like that should, uh, in my opinion, not be changed. I agree. Bag management is a skill, 100%. I mm -hmm. agree. Um, yeah, dog, yeah, it's it's a very formative part of uh, the vanilla WoW experience. It, it contributes to the, the the sense of realism you have. It definitely has economic implications, like S. Fun says. I mean, it, it one it increases the amount of gold you can hoard, and also it, it increases the amount of gold you can farm per hour if you're farming gold. Mm -hmm. uh, who here is a hunter or warlock that's farmed Moradon? You know, every hour, hour and a half, you have to hearth out to Nigel's point, vend your stuff, run back down. If you didn't, if you could just stay there all day, maybe. Uh, your gold power would be, you know, maybe 1.5 times what it normally is. Um, it has huge implications. A absolutely not, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, this I, guy, I, Doug, I like his question. Okay, go ahead. Uh, how, how big of a chance is it that Blizz will implement dynamic respawn rates in vanilla? What do you guys think? Mm. A b how big of a chance? Like, yeah. It, it's, it's hard to say because, like, we don't, we don't really have any, like, legitimate, like, uh, data or like real research to go off of, right? So yeah. it, it's it's really hard to say in that regard. Um, man, that that's hard to say to put like a number on it. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's definitely one potential solution uh, that they might see as a as a solution. Uh, but again, it based on like their population size, how effective that solution is. If population size is a little bit bigger. It won't yeah. be nearly as bad. If it's way bigger, then it could be something that's kind of frustrating to have to deal with, um, mm -hmm. or something that'll that'll affect the gameplay in, in a way that they might have not intended. Um, that'll be very interesting. That'll be very very interesting to see. I will definitely say if they're going to go down that route of increasing spawn timers or uh, or, or sorry, I guess decreasing spawn timers or, or adding dynamic respawns. I I hope I really really hope that they don't choose to do that unless they have extensive beta or alpha testing with that. Where they have yeah. stress tests and, and everything. I don't want them to just be like, "Oh yeah, this looks good. Let's roll it out." Like that's that is not how you should do dynamic response. Right. Right. Yeah. What um, would you prefer for the first couple of days? Dynamic respawns or sharding in the starting zones? Which, to me, if I had to like put both of those on like a piece of paper and say which one of these is less vanilla in terms of giving an authentic vanilla feel. Sharding is less vanilla to me, and based on that, I, I would agree. say dynamic yeah. responds. Yeah. yeah, me too. Um, I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah. I uh, there was one Shard question I wanted to get to. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna shard sharding, in my opinion, never ever has any place in vanilla WoW. I mean, there's something like totally uh, antithetical to vanilla WoW to the vanilla experience, like being in a zone and not being able to see other players that are in the same zone. Like that 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 should never be the case. I'd rather um, just be able to see everyone and have mobs respawning twice as fast, but know that I'm seeing everyone else that's in this virtual world. That contributes like the sense of the sense like Vanilla WoW is it's definitely a game, but it's also like you're totally just immersing yourself in a different world. And I think sharding really sharding really uh, <laughs> uh, d decreases that effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, sharding, not good. Um, Ixu, Ix, Ixozuxis, 
uh, asked this question earlier. I actually lost it in, in the scrolling. I'm, I'm trying to scroll through, and obviously we can't get to every question. And I want to go to the Twitter questions as well for the people who followed us on Twitter and, and are interacting with us on Twitter as well. But Ixus um, was was bringing up the concept of 1.13 and, and doing post nax progression. We've talked about that in the past. Uh, I, I'm sure in a QA and a we, we've mentioned it before. Uh, but with every single episode, we, we our audience increases. There's more and more people coming in and uh, watching Classic Cast, and uh, you know just just uh, to get our opinions on something. Like even if we may have mentioned it in the past, I, I think to kind of touch on how we feel about 1.13 and, and post Nax content. Uh, do you guys do one of you guys want to start? Yeah, I'll take it. I am 100% okay. anti post Nax content. 100% anti post Nax content. I think if you want new content, there's an entirely new expansion called Burning Crusade. It has like 15 new dungeons, like 10 new raids. Dude, it's freaking crazy. It's off the chain. You can 10 more levels. Dude, it's bonkers, man. Mm -hmm. I think that if you add new content, I mean, there's different ways to do it. But like the biggest thing that comes to mind um, is, is power creep. I mean, players respond to incentive. And so to incentivize doing and progressing through and farming new content, you have to incentivize players to do it. And what what do players what how do you incentivize players to do things in WoW? Well, you give them cool gear, you give them gear, um, and power creep is already like, like honestly, tier three is really really insanely good. It's crazy mm -hmm. good. It, it, it's it's like depending on your class, it's like ten or fifteen percent less less powerful than tier four. Like that's like it's almost as good as Burning Crusade gear. It's crazy strong. Um, and so so to imagine gear like that um, in vanilla WoW, I, I think that would be really bad. Um, the other thing is, I think if they start adding content um, post Nax, that decreases um, the likelihood or the chance of them eventually adding t classic TBC, right? Okay. Probably. Okay. Uh, yeah. Tips, you want to you want to give your opinion on it? Yeah, sure. Um, for me, I'll never say no to new content so long as they preserve the original servers. But I don't see any scenario where Blizzard looks to themselves and says. Oh yeah, instead of, you know, giving players this thing that we've already made that we don't have to spend any money on, we're going to go spend millions of dollars on development, QA, marketing, etc. to uh, implement some some features that probably already exist in TBC back into vanilla so players can enjoy it. I, I don't know. I just don't think it's as marketable. I don't think it's as profitable as profitable for Blizzard. You have TBC there. A lot of people do want TBC. You could even argue that the demand for TBC is on par with the demand mm -hmm. for vanilla. Absolutely. Um, I just I do not see the situation where Blizzard says let's let's make more content. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't say no to it ever, so long as they preserve the original servers. At the end of the day, it would be kind of cool to see Blizzard do patch 1.13, if only symbolically. It shows that they're interested in developing that kind of content again, that kind of hardcore MMO content again, uh, that would be something nice to see. Although uh, there's obviously problems like Stacey said with power creep and stuff like that, but I, I just don't see it happening. I want to throw this in there real quick. I, I see people saying like after next, what's there to do? People are going to get bored if they, let's say they don't add classic TBC. I, I promise you, I guarantee you, if after next, if Blizzard for the next 50 years, where every two years, if for the next 50 years, if every two years they were to just release an, a new fresh classic server people would play that literally until the end of time fresh. like there will always be people uh, wanting to play a fresh classic server mm -hmm. offered legitimately by blizzard there will mm -hmm. always be something to do yeah yeah for sure um so for me uh and i've talked about this before burning crusade is my favorite expansion uh it's, it's my favorite period of time in the game you know i use i use expansion and period of time in the game interchangeably so it's it's my favorite i like it more than vanilla just just a hair, right? Just a little more than vanilla. Um, with that being said, I would absolutely love the idea of doing both. And I, I don't want to go, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll try and give a quick rundown of what I'm thinking. Like if they have their, you know, the servers, they go to 1.12 and then they add a set of servers that you could transfer to, you can copy to. And this is, these are preserved 1.12 servers and people can create new characters there if they want, they can do whatever they want over there. Uh, but, you're basically taking the population of people who want to play 1.12 forever and you can put them on a server or a subset of servers. Then you take the original servers, or I mean, this is interchangeable, I guess. You can take the original servers and add 1.13. You can add 1.14 and so on. Or you can take those original servers and, and progress them to Burning Crusade. And then you can set, 
and again, interchangeable, another set of servers where you do the opposite of that, right? Where you can, again, copy to there and then play through that. Uh, I think that would be really cool just because of the concept of seeing things that you, you were teased at or you, you were teased in Vanilla WoW, Caverns of Time, Hyjal, Karazhan, I mean, Atish, for example. I mean, literally, the, the, the Nax Legendary takes you to Karazhan. And Karazhan's been, I mean, it's like all these things were in the game in vanilla. I think it would be really, really cool, and especially with Karazhan. Uh, now, I, I don't know how, how feasible it is, the development stuff. Like, I, I'm not the one who makes those decisions, but I think uh, from, from a fan perspective, from, from uh, someone who's a fan of Warcraft, someone who's a fan of WoW, I would really love the opportunity to be able to do uh, post next content and also play Burning Crusade because I love arenas. I, I love almost everything about Burning Crusade. I mean, every every vanilla has its problems. <clears throat> Burning Crusade has its problems. Uh, but I, I really, really enjoyed both. And I think that I would, if it's done the right way, I think I would really, really enjoy uh, like post next content and, uh, you know, Oldham. Oldham's another thing. There's so many things, right, that they could put in. Yeah. You could potentially put in like five different raid tiers and uh, like like you said, power creep is going to be a big issue with that, and I think the way to address power creep is to almost set like a hard cap on your on your item levels, right? Because here's the, here's why power creep in vanilla gets uh, well, spikes real hard at the end. I think the power creep is good. I think it's a good thing in games uh, as long as it's approached the right way. In Nax, not only do you have like a big power spike in terms of item level, more itemization points, more stats, they also kind of learned how to optimize gear a little bit better. Like, your Nax gear is actually very similarly itemized to Burning Crusade gear. Yeah, that's true. So, not only are you getting more stats on your gear, you're also getting stats that matter. Like, for example, the Holy Paladin, like the Tier 3 set for Holy Paladins, it's literally, like, Stamina, Intellect, Spell Crit, uh, and I believe a little bit of Mana per 5. Like, no Spirit, no like no no Wasted Stats, and plus Healing, excuse me, plus Healing as well. Uh, but it's like no no Wasted Stats, essentially. Um, whereas, like, in the early sets, like, it's, it's not quite like that. So, uh, I, I think, yeah. uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think those are all things to consider. I kind of went all over the place. I was trying to, uh, condense that as much as possible. Yeah, but, no, um, yeah, yeah I, I so, would like to go to Twitter. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And I'd like to go to Twitter after this. There's one more question I see, and, uh, I, I anticipate that my answer is, like, probably going to make people angry. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stir the pot here. Okay. The question is is from like Lair, Lair, Reg Lair Z. Do you think they will make uh, till Wrath servers because that's what they've defined as class wow experience? So pretty much like, are you asking, do you think that they will not go past classic Wrath? Like they won't do classic cat or classic mop? And uh, honestly, my opinion here is um, I'm, I'm trying to be like, like as intellectually honest as with, with this as I possibly can. I think that someone's desire to replay WAD, classic WAD, is just as legitimate as and valuable and valid as my desire to replay classic vanilla. See you later. I, I really do. See, yeah. No, it's fine. Uh, I, I, I don't like World of Draenor. I, I quit. Like I, I really disliked it. I think I think the expansion sucked. But if someone did like it, like I'm not going to tell them that their opinion is wrong. Um, they 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 are in a similar predicament that I'm in. Um, they want to play a version of the game that is no longer legitimately offered. Yeah. And if, if they want to play it, they have to play on a private server. You're He's right. You're technically He's right. right. You're technically right. I wouldn't play it, right? Yeah. But I'm but not going to tell someone else that, that does want to play it that their opinion is, is illegitimate or stupid or invalid, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that's technically the same as, as people who say, like, oh, we want to play vanilla and we're stupid. That's technically the same thing. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yes. I just, Maybe I just we are stupid. Who knows? <laughs> I just don't think the demand for WAD servers will ever remotely approach vanilla TBC or Wrath servers. Yeah, I just think like monetarily. Yeah, and like yeah. there's just not enough people that would buy into it. But I think that after Wrath of the Lich King, there's obviously a significant drop off in demand. Cataclysm is very popular amongst PVPers. Uh, it's actually often said to be one of the best PVP balanced expansions. So I can see Cataclysm from a demand standpoint, but I think Blizzard internally are like, okay, these are our classic games. This is the original trilogy. I don't think they'll go beyond it in the future because then it sets up a precedent to just go all the way. I mean, we could be on Battle for Azeroth uh, uh, classic, you know, years down the line. <laughs> At some point, I think they'll draw the line for themselves. Um, it's There's plenty of people, there's enough people to split the player base, but to split the player base on eight expansions versus three, I think it's just, I can't imagine Blizzard doing that. I just can't for whatever reason. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah, Watts sucks. If you like, you should feel bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so there's a question. This is okay. This is a, a, a short story. Okay. Uh, this is a short story and I want to see if I can, if I can find a way to, uh, put this into another here. Actually, let's do this. My bad. Let's answer another question. And I want to see if I can condense this into a story or we might have to address this in another class cast. Um, or condense this into an, into like a, a short question, but, um, somebody brought up the field of view difference. Uh, if I can find this again, somebody brought up the field of view difference in, uh, vanilla. Wow. And the 1.12 client and the Legion client are really post wrath, right? Wrath. They, they, uh, change the resolution of the, they, they change the field of view to match like a 16.9 resolution. So you basically right. fit more on your screen. Uh, this is one of those things to me that I think is probably going to be affected by them trying to downscale the game. I don't know. Uh, I do know it does like, that's one of the things I, I noticed whenever I first started playing. Like I thought like the camera looked really zoomed in whenever I was playing vanilla and I got kind of used to it. Um, but I don't know. What do you, what do you guys think about that? Um, again, like on a technical side of things, I'm not sure if we'll see it. Uh, it sounds like something that would probably be retained in the system if you're downporting. I do have confidence that Blizzard, especially after that last job listing, yeah. they're trying to do their best to kind of restore the game to how it used to look. Mm -hmm. um, so I have faith in that. If it manages to make it, this uh, the, the increased field of view, I mean, you know, it's, it's not Blizz-like, no changes, all that stuff. But it's one of those things that, well, I mean, you know what? It could have severe implications, especially in PvP. So I, I'd rather it not be in there. I, I hope they understand. I hope they pay attention to it. Uh, I guess. Well, the problem the problem with it is is that right now there's a uh, you can run a script that can actually change your field of view on the 1.12 client. So mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of people do that anyway. Um, mm -hmm. So that's 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 another thing too to consider. Uh, yeah. Just because like, it's it's not something that like is a is a limitation of the client. That's the thing. It's not something that I think it's a limitation of the client. It's the fact that whenever Vanilla WoW came out, like almost nobody had sixteen by nine monitors. Right. Yeah. yeah. There there's a script you can do. I think even if it's not you know like built, even if there's not like an FOV slider like built in functionality, you can still accomplish it. it like you said, uh, I, I don't think it's a limitation of the client. So I I'm not sure that they, that they will. I, I mean I, I don't know. I personally, I personally would prefer to have a longer field of view. To be totally honest. Yeah, I, and That's again, this I is like. this isn't so field of view is different than view distance. Uh, right. So just, yeah. My bad. Well, uh, well, I, I, I want a long draw distance, and I want to see everything always. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, and this is something to uh, uh, this is something to, to clarify for for people listening. Uh, so so view distance is basically like. Uh, like like Stay Safe was just saying, like it's being able to see everything from like a, a million miles away, uh, just making a joke about it. But field of view actually is like being able to see more on your screen, uh, width and height. It, it, essentially, it's like a kind of like a fisheye. That's that's how that's how the, the best way I can describe it, right? It's like kind of like yeah. a fisheye lens, like a little bit more mm -hmm. fisheye on your screen. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that's likely going to be kept just from a technical standpoint and. I don't know. That's something that doesn't quite bother me too much. If, if you know, one way or the other, it doesn't quite bother me because I got used to it. Whenever I felt more zoomed in, whenever uh, I look at the 1.12 client now, so. Yeah, I'd be more concerned with how movement feels than anything else, like graphically and stuff like that. Uh, I know I got a lot of flame for it on the last classic ass, but I still, I still hold to it, man. Like if the game starts to feel too much from a movement standpoint, from an ability standpoint, and stuff like that, casting standpoint like the modern game, that, that I, I'm not going to get upset with it, but I, I can definitely see why some people would get upset with it. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's probably the bigger concern for me than, than Field of View. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that, that question, by the way, was from Radiant Blaze on Twitter. Uh, so again, if you guys want to send us any tweets, uh, SFANTV, tips out baby, and stay safe warlock, uh, hashtag classic cast would be nice. And um, I'm looking at tweets now. Um, Hey, this is a really good question here from Adrian, I think. It, okay. Can we can we answer this real quick? Yeah, okay. for sure. What do you think the private server players will be surprised most of when moving to real classic in terms of mechanics? Uh, so th this isn't in terms of mechanics, but what I think, th this is, I anticipate the biggest difference between private servers and classic WoW. On, on actual classic WoW, I think everyone is going to be really, really bad. 
I think I think the, the general skill and knowledge of the game is going to be so much lower than it than it is on private servers. You have to imagine the pe the people that are playing on private servers right now are absolute freaking vanilla fanatics. True. They're willing to to torrent the game. They're willing to to invest countless hours, days, weeks of their gameplay on a server that might disappear overnight. These people are vanilla about freaks. Okay, they've probably been playing it for like that. Like it, it's crazy, and, and we we've all been there. But these these are the the most loyal vanilla wow players that there possibly can be and when classic wow is out the biggest change will be the community change there will be a ton more uh casuals people that that heard about it at work in the office hey that might be fun let's go try it out you're gonna have a lot more kids it's going to be so accessible the game uh, the general player base is going to be much more casual i think mm -hmm. yeah for sure and uh <laughs> Could that actually leads into this next question really well. This is from uh, this is from Weasel on Twitter, and uh, he says when Classic launches, it's very likely a large majority of people will quit within the first few months. Uh, likely, I mean, any game with that much hype, it's it's just going to be like that. You have the big spike, and then you start to drop off. Um, if we kept servers at two and a half to three and a half k, a few months later, the servers would be far emptier. Should we change the server population size so that later down the line, the server population resembles what Vanilla's was back then? Or should we launch them as Blizz-like population sizes and have a lower server population later on? And, and I'll go ahead and start with this. Uh, this is one of the benefits of having a little bit higher server population because you'll see nowadays where there'll be like 2,000 people on a server, even 3,000 people on a server, and uh, you'll go and have people say like, oh, like this is dead, like I don't even want to play anymore. The original game was like two and a half to three K estimated, right? That's 2,000 people is plenty. 2,000 people is plenty of people uh, to be able to play and have a good vanilla experience. So if you do have a little bit higher population cap that, that slowly trickles down a little bit and, and, and tapers off, uh, I, that's going to be totally fine. And uh, I, I think you bring up a good point, in my opinion. Uh, do one of you guys want to touch on that? If you gave me the keys and you said, do whatever you want to do, you're in charge, 100 servers, 5K cap. That's it. Okay. I mean, uh, that's 500,000 people concurrently playing. It's going to be, it's going to suck for the first couple of days. There's going to be millions trying to play, but over time, I think it's a great balance. If it's so high that you need to add more servers, then so be it. But I don't think, uh, you know, like you said, S-Man, 3,000 players on a server is a lot. Like yeah. if you actually like go into like Stormwind, Orgrimmar, Ironforge, around in the world, you're still going to see people in the world. You're going to see a lot of people in capital cities. Mm -hmm. It's not 15K, but it's plenty to get the game done. And you could even argue that uh, things like, you know, getting a group together and, and being careful of your reputation and stuff like that. Those are actual mechanics on smaller servers. Those aren't mechanics on larger servers because you don't have to worry if you ninja loot or not. There's dozens, thousands of people that, that would group with you. They don't care, stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, so, so I think, I think 5k is great. It's a great middle ground. And I think a hundred servers, that's 500k concurrent. Just, just keep it simple. You know, that, that's how I see it. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. This will be another really big difference between like active player base, between classic servers and private servers is that if we're talking about a 3k cap uh, on a private server, that that's a 3k cap pretty much around the clock, 24 hours, because you have Europeans playing in this time zone and then Australians in this time zone and North Americans this time zone. There's always, you know, the, the time zones are always rolling over, but it's very likely that in classic WoW, servers will be region locked. Um, and you won't have many Europeans playing on US West Coast servers, very few of them. So when it's, when it's midnight US West Coast, um, if the server cap is 3k potential, there might only be 900 people online, you know? Yeah. So it's not going to be 3K around the clock if that's the cap like it would be on a private server. It's not going to be international, very unlikely at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's, what, that, that's another thing to, to kind of uh, touch on. And it's like the authentic vanilla experience or the like private server experience, right? And uh, I, think, I think that what people <laughs> want may, may have changed a little bit over the years, right? Just because they've experienced different things. And uh, I think that's fine, right? I mean, people people... People are allowed to have different opinions on what they want exactly, but uh, I, I do think that's something just like interesting to point out, right? With like higher population sizes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of having like a higher population size, the this is another question. Uh, Fahad brings this up. Uh, he says he's worried that with vanilla servers being too big, if if they were to make them too big, right? Like I, like for example, Thip says five thousand would be fine. I, I think five thousand would be fine too. Um, Based on the amount of players on each server, it won't feel like a community since there are way too many people. 
Uh, I would actually say the the exact opposite. Um, I mean, I, I can like I, I I would say that the more people are there, that's the more opportunities that you have to make more relationships and to to be able to interact with uh, more people that might be playing the game in the same vein as you are. That's what I would say. So I, I wouldn't worry about a lack of community because it's too big and you feel kind of like lost a little bit in, in what's going on. But uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, how, how do you guys feel about that? I, I think I, you're right. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'll, I'll go ahead. Um, yeah, th- there's been points on servers with 12,000 people online or, or you know, 10,000, 9,000, where it, the server's been out for nine months and I log in and I see a guy standing in Iron Forge, and I've I've never seen him before. And he's in full tier two. He's in amazing gear, full enchants, and I've literally never heard of this guy. I'm like, it, I had this thought one time. I'm like, okay, this is a guy that's probably invested, you know, dozens of days slash played, playing this same game on the same server that I'm playing, and I've never even seen him. No idea who he is. Um, and so I, I definitely think from like a community standpoint, it's possible to have too many people on a server. Yeah. Um, there's something to be said mm-hmm. for like a uh, spawned account. Who knows? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> um, definitely smaller community does mean it's more tight knit and close and everyone to each other. And I, I think that's, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I agree with stay safe there. Like I, there's some, there's a point where a server starts to feel like a cross from <laughs> zone when it has too many people and you, it's just like, who's this guy? Who's that guy? And more yeah. importantly than that, I feel like there's some negative consequences when it comes to player behavior when there's too many people. Um, I've noticed this. Maybe it's just like, you know, maybe it's sampling bias or whatever. But I've noticed that when I'm on a very large server and I'm playing, um, a lot of antisocial behavior starts to kick in from people around me and myself. Right. Uh, instead of talking to people, asking them, hey, you want to join a group, socializing. I see somebody next to me. I invite them to a group. We kill the quest mobs. Nobody talks. When we're done, we leave the group. Nobody talks. It feels like people almost become dispensable NPCs in worlds that big right. because you don't have to care about your reputation anymore uh, because at the end of the day, there's so many people that uh, you can always just, you know, you're going to get lost in the tens of thousands. So. Yeah. I've, I've kind of noticed that behavior a little bit. And I feel like large servers, they trivialize a lot of the social community aspect of vanilla. Again, you don't have to worry about your reputation on the server as much. You can get groups much faster. And at the end of the day, you shouldn't be able to like chain Zulfarak groups 10 times in a row with all different people. Like this, the game's not meant to be played that way. Um, there's so many opportunities to join a lot of guilds, which is a good thing on the surface. But at the same time, again, you know, was vanilla meant to have like 30 guilds on a server, 30 raiding guilds on a server, or, or just a couple of top end guilds and stuff like that. I mean, I, I feel like it does take away from some of the community meshing and the closeness. Although, as Svan said, it does give you a lot of opportunities to meet yeah. more people because you have more people. But yeah, yeah, I see what you guys are saying. I, and maybe maybe I just had a little bit different experience. Uh, now, I, I didn't. I, I didn't stream from the beginning, like right whenever whenever I was whenever I was doing my thing back on YouTube. Uh, I, I wasn't a streamer from the beginning. I started streaming uh, a few months into my playing experience, uh, just kind of for fun. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe 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 streaming affected that a little bit, but I, I felt like I, I just developed a lot of relationships with a lot of people. And maybe that's my own, like, natural tendencies as a person uh, that, that kind of, like, led to that. But I just had a little bit different experience than that. But I, I do, like, I understand what you guys are saying, too. So that's just, maybe it's just different for different people, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think streaming plays a role as well. Like naturally, like, S fan, I'm guessing when you log in, you get a couple of whispers. Hey, what's up, man? I watch your content. I watch your stream, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you're out in the world. You're doing a quest. Somebody comes by. Normally they would just walk by, but they see, oh, it's, it's S fan, you know, yeah. group up with them, stuff like that. So it's definitely different when you're kind of anonymous and, and you're on your own in the world versus yeah. kind of having a reputation with you. Yeah, yeah, man. I remember just kind of like a short, just short story. Like I, I was grinding for an epic weapon because I did not have a weapon for Molten Core for the longest time. And it's just, every week, is it going to drop? Am I going to get a BRE? Am I going to go Spinal Reaper? Am I going to get something? And like just every week, no, no, no. And then I finally got a Spinal Reaper. And dude, my whispers, like I tried to respond to every single person who whispered to me, but like my whispers exploded. Like people were posting in world chat, like 
the the kind of community that you have in in WoW, it's like there were more people like congratulating me to watch my stream at the time. Like I I know like I know you know the kind of yeah. community that the the potential for the kind of community that exists in in vanilla WoW is is so great and so awesome. And like that's part of that's part of where like the Gratz S fan meme comes from. Like people literally Gratz S fan will like link an item that I can't even get. Gratz S fan breastplate of might. I'm a paladin. <laughs> just like thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, that was, that was just one of the really really cool experiences that I I remember from back in the day and and just like a like one of the real like strong like senses of community that I got. So yeah, uh, can you guys cover for a question real quick? I I, I gotta run real fast. I'll be back in like two minutes. Yeah, sure, yeah, absolutely. I'll pick out a question. Let's see here. Uh, this is not related to leveling, but uh, casual Canadian. Hey, dude, what's up? Do you have a recommend? Do you have a recommended distribution loot system you look for when searching for a guild, or is it personal preference? Uh, tips. What, what do you think about loot system for guild? Um, honestly, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. It depends on what kind of guild you have. First and foremost, if you have a progression guild, it's probably loot council. Like the top end guilds, it's probably loot council all the way. Progress, nope, those guys guaranteed. Um, if you have more of a, a semi-hardcore guild, I feel like the biggest asset that a raider can bring to vanilla and to a vanilla raid is consistency. So honestly, I would default to some kind of DKP, EPGP system or whatever with oversight of loot council. And that's what I currently do in my guild right now. It's like there's, there's a DKP system. However, there are certain items that are just too good, like Drake Fang Talisman, stuff like that. Those have to be decided by loot council because... At the end of the day, you really want them in the right person's hand. But uh, I, I am a fan of DKP in vanilla. I don't agree with it beyond vanilla. I think things change a lot after that. But in vanilla, the most important thing is consistency, especially on smaller servers. I think when you're playing on a 15,000 pop server, again, you kind of lose that aspect of the game. But if you're playing on a 3,000 pop server, it's a lot harder to get 40 people into a group. And I think one of the ways you can mm -hmm. reward uh, them to show up is to have some kind of DKP show up system. You know, that's how you get points. But obviously, Luke Council over, overseeing things as well. Oh. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's funny because I'm like completely opposite, I guess. I would, I will, at a point in my life, I will never be in an EPGP or DKP guild. Never. <laughs> because I, I've, I've had too many experiences of a complete idiot getting something really good. And uh, sometimes these people just, I mean, phew. what I want in a guild is a fascist strongman leader who's benevolent <laughs> and it knows everything about everything. I want a fascist strongman dictator yeah. uh, who's also a nice guy, and uh, that's how that's how that's what I want to be in. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, I, I I heard a little bit of the question. I believe it was uh, DKP versus loot council. It was just like what what's the preferred loot system? Just for yeah. us personally. Yeah. For me, loot council, but it has to be done the right way. It absolutely has to be done the right way. Um, the thing with loot council to me is that it can be abused, but a lot of times whenever people complain about loot council abuse, this is what I've this is what I've learned, is that the people who complain about loot council abuse are the people who are coming in and they're they're clocking in and clocking out as fast as they can. They're not putting in the extra effort. They're not people that are that are making an impact on the guild. They're not the guys who are helping their guildies and, and doing the things to earn favor in terms of getting loot. A lot of the times, the people who complain about that are the people who, like I said, they're just trying to they're, they're just trying to get their check at the end of the week. You know, they're just trying to hey, I did the raid. Where's my loot? You know, they're just trying to get the welfare stuff. Um, as far as loot council goes, if it's done properly and it's done in a in a way that is you're, you're giving the gear and you're giving the stuff where it needs to go in addition to in addition to uh, uh, rewarding people in a fair way I think that's the way to do it in my opinion I know like in, in the case of DKP you can have guys like get DKP and there's there's the concept of and, and I've heard this before is like and I don't know if, if you guys talked about this but like doing DKP and then also like kind of having like oversight over the DKP. It's like, oh, well, you can't bid on it, right? I, I don't I don't like that because to me, it's like you, you got to choose. Like, are you DKP or are you loot council? Because if you're DKP, you have to let everybody. Oh, F? Did we F? We're good. We're okay, good. Okay. okay. So if you're DKP, like, I think you have to let people just like you saved up your DKP. You can spend it as you want. If you're loot council, then 
your loot council and you say, okay, this goes here, like our, our, our warriors get this, our, our rogues get that, our mages get this, our warlocks get that. Mm-hmm. And, and you can figure all that out in a fair manner. If you want to give DKP, like more, if you want to have DKP and like officers get more DKP or like Guildmaster gets more DKP because they would normally get like more favor in a loot council situation because they're doing more work, they're spending the time behind the scenes. Like, I cannot tell you, running a guild, I cannot tell you the amount of hours every single week that was spent. For me, I was doing raid sheets. I was doing loot council. I was meeting with my officers. I was planning this. I was planning that all on top of, like, trying to stream. Like, I remember people were spamming me. Why don't you stream? Why don't you stream? It's like, I'm having, like, meetings, like, all day. <laughs> like, I'm having yeah. guild meetings. Mm. So, like, there's so much extra work. It's, it's a second job. And uh, that's why those people in a loot council situation are going to get a little bit more favor. Um, I also think loot council is better in terms of, like, gearing up your tanks and, you know, you, you want to have... It, the concept of like a main tank kind of changes later on in vanilla because you don't have quite like one main tank. You end up having tanks like TPS tanks and defensive tanks, and you have guys that that, that fit different roles. But uh, you want to establish those roles as players, and you want to distribute the loot the right way. Uh, if you don't do it the right way, then loot council is going to suck. So basically, yeah. loot council puts the onus on the leadership, and yeah. in in my opinion, I like that if you have good leadership. As a guild leader, I prefer loot council. In a progression guild, I prefer loot council. But I feel like in general, if you're a semi-hardcore or a casual guild and you're playing on a Blizz-like population server, I, I, I've just, I do see merit in DKP. I think it gets a little bit too much flame sometimes. It's abusable. Yeah, it's a different way everything, to do it, yeah. In different, yeah, there's no, there's no perfect system at the end of the day. Um, but I'm guessing the people in the chat right now they're watching Classic Cast. We don't even know when BlizzCon is coming. You guys are probably experienced with Vanilla or looking forward to putting a lot of time into it. Loot Council, find a hardcore guild with good leadership, like Stay Safe said. Probably, that's what you'll probably be more amenable towards mm-hmm. in general. Here's a quick bonus idea. I've, I've been in guilds uh, that have done this where every they'll, uh, the leadership will rotate one random person onto the Loot Council. So every week you'll have one raider on the loot council that can throw in his input well. and, and he contributes. That's that's a good way to get people involved as well for that, I think. Yeah. But also, like, yeah, I, I think I think that's a good way to do it. Um, but like I said, like, a lot of times people who, like, don't like loot council, like, they they either experience it in a bad guild. And I have two. I have two. I've been in a bad guild where it's, like, they've just, like, taken everything and uh, not really, like, distributed the loot properly. Um now, I, I will say this. I've made mistakes. Being a guild leader in a loot council guild, I have made personal mistakes in regards to giving loot to people that were not, uh, that they did not earn it yet. You know, whether, right, uh, right. Like, like a lot of people say like, oh, well, if you're a trial in a loot council guild, like you don't get any loot. It's like, okay, well, if you're a trial in a DKP guild, you're not going to get any loot, right? Because you don't have any DKP saved up. So, so, like, yeah, it, it works the same way. The only difference is is that if loot does trickle down to you in a DKP guild, uh, you're going to have to spend some DKP on it. In a loot council situation, and you're in trial on a guild, you're a new player, and all of a sudden, like, everybody has the, the gear already, then you lucked out, right? Like, I had a situation where we had somebody get best-in-slot weapons and an onslaught girdle in the BWL patch. A warrior got Kroll Shrook Doom's Edge and onslaught girdle in a matter of eight days. A trial warrior. Uh, and he ended up being a, a good player for us. But that's just how it works sometimes, you know. If, if you have uh, a good distribution of gear in your guild and all the other warriors already have it and your rep Palin already has it too, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, yeah. That's why he wants Luke Council, yeah. man. <laughs> no, and that's, that, like, that's part of it too is, like, whenever you're, uh, whenever you're the guild leader, whenever you're an officer in the guild uh, and the, the amount of work that's put in, if, if you say, like, okay, like, we're going to give officers bonus DKP, like, it just, I, I think that kind of comes off the wrong way, uh, as opposed to just being like, look, this guy gets this, like, we're not, like, uh, more than likely, just a, a, a typical member in the guild is not going to get Atish in Nax, you know, like, uh, my warlock officer, or, like, my mage officer is going to be getting that, or priest, or, or druid even, but, like, uh, that's that's going to be the situation where, like, one of those guys is more than likely going to get it because they're in that position because the amount of time and effort and work that they've put in throughout the course of about two years or a year and a half at the time Nax comes out uh, establishing and, and cultivating uh, this guild. So, yeah. 
Yeah. I think we all agree that personal loot is the way to go, though, for real. Yeah, That's... just personal loot. Just take all the decision making out of the game. I think that'd be great. Let's just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Do you guys? Do you guys have any other questions? Is there? Uh, is there anything else that you guys want to hit on? We've been going for uh, about two hours now. So I think this else? is a good spot. Yeah, th there's been some really, really good questions. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with this so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think... Uh... <laughs> Need before agree. <laughs> yeah. By the way, guys, if you haven't already, please, please, please go follow Stay Safe TV. Go follow Tips Out, baby. They're both on Twitch as well. Uh, also, their YouTube channels and my YouTube channel, S Fan TV. You can see all the all the names are right down there. All the handles are right down there. Twitter as well. Tips out, baby. S Fan TV. Stay Safe is the only one that's different than his other ones. Stay Safe Warlock. Please go follow us. Uh, check out the channels as well. Yes, for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And Stay Safe just linked Tips Outs in the chat. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, S1, you're gonna keep streaming the rest of the day, right? I am. I am. I am. All right. So, uh, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and continue with the rest of our stream. Uh, again, <clears throat> thank you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for joining us for uh, Classic Cast. Oh, jeez, that was an accident. Cut out. No, I, uh, I hit my soundboard. I hit the wrong button on my soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys so much for joining us for yeah. Classic Cast. <laughs> This is Classic Cast number nine, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you guys so much. <laughs> right, I'm gonna dip out of here, guys. Take it easy. Yeah. This one. Have a good rest of your stream, man. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you guys next time. Maybe two weeks. We'll see. We'll see. Take care, boys. Are we? Are we done? Oh shit. <laughs>